In this video, I want to have a look at every single pair of Air Jordan 11 retros that Nike's ever come out with. The Air Jordan 11 was originally released back in 1995, but it was first retroed in 2000. And over the years, Nike's retroed the shoe 15 different times. In this video, I want to walk you through each and every release, starting with the first ones from 2000 and 2001. We're going to start right here with this box, have a look at it. All of these retros came with the Michael Jordan face box, and they came with retro cards. Check this out. On the back of the retro card, it actually only goes up to the Air Jordan 15. We're about to see the Air Jordan 30. It's hard to believe that these boxes and retro cards and shoes are actually half as old as the Air Jordan line itself. Anyway, back to the 11s, and let's start here with the Concords. The Air Jordan 11 is the first pair of Jordans with patent leather uppers. It was actually Michael Jordan's idea, and he said that people would wear these shoes with tuxedos. He was right when Boys to Men actually broke these shoes out at an award show. Anyway, the shoe was inspired by a lawnmower, and it was designed by Tinker Hatfield. The patent leather is supposed to resemble the rubber bumper on a lawnmower. A big innovation on the Air Jordan 11 is the carbon fiber right here. It's the first time that Nike ever put carbon fiber in Air Jordan 11s, and most of them ever since this point will have carbon fiber right here. Very, very cool. Have a look at the box for these Concords. Your box of shoes will tell you so much about your pair of kicks. It says CHM. This pair came from Champs. If your boxes say FTA, that's foot action, FTL is foot locker, EAS is East Bay, you can tell so much by the little details. These shoes were only $124.99. All of these retros were $124.99. The latest pair has been $200, and they're only going up from here. One last thing to mention about these Concords is Concord is actually a shade of purple. It comes from the outsole right here, some little bitty details on the upper, but it's crazy that a white and black shoe is actually nicknamed Concord Purple. Have a look at the next pair right here. The Space Jams, also from the year 2000. An interesting fact about this shoe, it was released on a Wednesday. Because so many kids cut school to buy this pair of shoes, Nike changed it up and started retroing and releasing Jordans on Saturdays. An interesting detail about this shoe is the tongue says Jordan Jam on here. Usually Air Jordan 11s say Jumpman Jordan. This is the only pair of retros that says Jam on there. Very interesting. So Michael Jordan wore these in the movie Space Jam, but he also wore them way back in 95 against the Orlando Magic. He also wore this pair back then too. The Space Jams never came out to the public during the OG era. Actually, back in 95, 96, we had Concords, we had the Columbias, and we had the Black and Reds. Space Jams were just for Michael, and they said 45 on the back here because he just came back from retirement wearing the number 45. There were even samples that said the number 45, but the only ones released to the public say the number 23. So another pair that Michael wore back in the day are the Columbia Blues. Columbia Blue is actually also known as Jordy Blue. It's Pantone 292. Pantone is the way that we communicate colors, and all these different colors have numbers. The specific number for this color is 292. But anyway, when this shoe was retroed most recently, Nike changed the name to Legend Blue instead of Columbia Blue, which comes from Columbia University. Michael Jordan wore this pair of shoes in the All-Star game way back in the day. This is a beautiful example, still very, very icy for being almost 15 years old. An interesting detail about the Columbia Blues, check it out, above the patent leather right here, you're going to see leather along with this ballistic mesh. Usually Air Jordan 11s just have ballistic mesh on the upper. See there, the mesh versus the leather? Kind of an interesting little detail. And as we work our way to the next pair of retros, that's changed ever so slightly. Let's check out the cool grays. The colorway from this shoe actually came from Air Max 95s, the cool gray and the neon yellows. Gentry Humphrey told me that when he was visiting the shoe museum. But as you look at the upper on here, above the patent leather, it's suede with a suede tongue. And again, that's different from that ballistic mesh all over the upper. And then in the case of the Columbias, the leather and the ballistic mesh. 
It's all about the details. I remember when these cool grays were retroed for the first time. I actually left law school to pick up a pair. I thought they were so cool. They were still available in stores. Like back in the day, you could actually go to the store and buy a cool pair of shoes. Nowadays, it's impossible. Let's have a look at the next pair, the black and reds. Originally, my first pair of Air Jordan 11s that I ever had were OG black and red 11s from 96. It's also the first pair of shoes I ever sold on eBay. And I sold them to buy these 2001 retros. So here's a beautiful shoe. It's my all-time favorite pair of shoes. Natalie and I actually wore a pair in our wedding. Tinker Hatfield customized another pair for each of us for wedding gifts. I just think this shoe is so beautiful and so amazing. Anyway, Michael Jordan won his fourth championship wearing black and red 11s. And back in the day, they were called playoff 11s, not bread 11s like they are today. Anyway, from these shoes right over here, I want to work our way over to the DMPs. This is the first defining moment pack of shoes. DMP refers to the defining moments of Michael Jordan's career. This two pack of shoes used to belong to DJ AM. I purchased it from the DJ AM Memorial Fund for $833.99. The two pairs came together with the gold box commemorating Michael Jordan's first championship in 1991 and his fourth championship, the first one back from retirement in the Air Jordan 11s. You'll notice that the shoes have little dog tags commemorating the dates. It says June 26th, 1996, his first championship after retirement. That was on Father's Day. You'll remember Michael Jordan crying on the ground with a basketball because his father had passed away just a couple years earlier. The shoes came with this little gold booklet. They retailed for $295, and they were the first of a series of DMP shoes. There's also DMP1s, DMP5s, DMP7s. There's other Jordan 2 packs of shoes, but not all of them are DMPs. From the $295 retail price point DMPs, let's work our way to the 2008 Collezione packs. These black and red 11s were released alongside the Taxi 12s, and they came out Christmas of 2008, and ever since then, the Christmas holidays have been dominated with Air Jordan 11s. This pack of shoes was $310. Back in 2008, retros didn't come out every week and every other week like they do now. Actually, once a month, a pack of shoes came out, and the shoes added up to the number 23 to commemorate the 23rd anniversary of the Air Jordan line. So you'll see that the Air Jordan 11 plus 12 is 23. All the packs were $310. Most of them, people were up in arms about having to buy two shoes because people wanted the three and they didn't want the 20. They wanted the four and they didn't want the 19. And they weren't happy about the inflated price point or having to buy two shoes. That was not the case with this December pack from 2008 because everyone loves the black and red 11s and everyone loves the taxi 12s. So this was the most desirable of all of the 08 Collezione pack shoes. Let's work our way to 2009, the Space Jams. So this pair of shoes came with this cool little drawer box, it slides right out with this plastic insert. It says, Tinker made them shine, Mike made them fly, you made them iconic. Starting in 2009 with these Space Jams, all the different Air Jordan 11s that come out at the holidays, with the exception of the 2012 black and reds, come in these special boxes. This pair retailed for $175. You'll see the difference. Remember we talked earlier about the Jordan Jam versus the Jumpman Jordan that came out on the 2009 release. Now, after this, the Air Jordans were really going up by $5 at a time, with the exception of this pair of 25th anniversary white and silvers. So for the 25th anniversary of the Air Jordan line in 2010, Nike released white and silver Jordans because the 25th anniversary, of course, is the silver anniversary. We got these ones in a special case, twos, threes, fours, nines, elevens, and 2010s. The elevens are amazing. Have a look at them. Very clean, plain shoe. Something really interesting about them, though, is there's no Jumpman on the side. Only 25 pairs came with a Jumpman logo and a little hidden emblem underneath the right insole that said one of 25. I've never been lucky enough to get my hands on one of those shoes. This pair was only $150. So the general inflation where the shoes have gone up and up and up, 
In 09, the Space Jams were 175 And then in May of 2010, they dropped the price. When does Nike ever drop the price on Air Jordan Retros, especially in 11? And these ones were just $150. They came with this box. And you know what? I'm glad that they did because I think it's cool that in looking at all of these different boxes, we get a whole array of the Air Jordan boxes, from the face boxes to the double boxes to the drawer boxes to the black and silver box. It's just a really cool example of all the different boxes that have come out in the retro era of Air Jordans. Let's work our way to the 2010 Cool Grays, back up to $175. I remember being online on Nike.com when this shoe was going to launch. At the time, they came out at 9 p.m. Pacific time on Friday night. For some reason, this shoe became available 10 minutes early. And I was looking at it, and it was there. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is it. I bought three of them. That's unheard of now, where we're limited to just buying one pair at a time, and they certainly aren't launching shoes 10 minutes early. Again, it's got that suede upper up above the patent leather, icy soles. Look at that yellowing, though. No matter what happens with these shoes, no matter what you do to them, unfortunately, they go yellow on the outsoles. Anyway, from the $175 Cool Grays, let's work our way to the next holiday year in 2011, a $5 jump to the $180 Concord 11s, back to that shade of Concord purple on the outsole. Tinker Hatfield actually autographed this box of shoes. He showed up at the Nike store in Portland and surprised people and signed boxes. I wasn't lucky enough to be there, but I emailed him and said, hey, can I send you my box and will you sign it? He did. And he even drew a little Jumpman logo on there. Very, very cool. So this shoe really changed the game. The December 2011 holidays were crazy. People were breaking into malls to buy this shoe. There's footage on YouTube of people literally tearing down doors to break in and get this shoe. And after this release, Nike changed it up and they really made all of their coveted shoes available predominantly on the internet because of all the riots and violence that came back with this shoe. And of course, this wasn't the first time that there was violence and craze over a release of a shoe, but it was ridiculous when these came out. Two months later, the Galaxy Foams came out. It was even worse. And then it was all about the internet. So from 2011 with these $180 Concords, let's work our way to 2012 with the black and reds right here. This beautiful pair of shoes, $185 for this pair. And I said earlier that this was the only time that they did a holiday shoe, Jordan 11, without that special box. They did keep that little plastic insert there, but we don't have the drawer box that you'll see going all the way back to the 2009 Space Jams and all the way up to the 2014 Legend Blues. Everyone was so excited when Nike retroed this shoe in 2012. Violence ensued. And then, of course, all the way through 2013 and even into 2014, Nike was restocking the shoes. Something Nike's done differently in this whole retro era is really restrict the supply of shoes, which is creating this crazy supply and demand where people are going nuts for shoes and then they're slowly trickling them out with restock. Anyway, let's work our way to the next holiday, 2013, the Gamma Blue 11s. Gamma Blue and Varsity Maize. Maize is Spanish for corn. It refers to the yellow on here. When these shoes were first surfacing, People were thinking that they were sort of like blackout versions of Space Jams, and you can see the resemblance right there. They came out alongside a bunch of other Gamma Blue Air Jordans, including 12s, a pair from the Element series. This is the most popular of all of those. Anyway, let's work our way to the next holiday, 2014. The most recent brand Jordan went crazy, starting with these $200 Legend Blues. You'll notice that similar to the earlier retros, you've got the ballistic mesh on the tongue, followed by the leather on the upper and the patent leather. Just little details that make these shoes different, one after the other. Alongside these $200 Legend Blues, paying tribute to the legend of Michael Jordan at the University of North Carolina, we actually got two bags, these Air Jordan 11 Messenger bags. They feature the real sole of an Air Jordan 11 on the bottom there. And I believe it's like about a size 13. You can check it out and see what my 11 and a half looks like stacked on the top of this. Probably a 13, maybe even a 14. But anyway, these backpacks are very cool. Same material and details as what's on the shoe. And these backpacks were $250. 
I had to buy them so that I could complete all of this to do the video for you. Then along with the backpacks and the Legend Blue 11s was the ultimate gift of flight, Pantone 11s. We talked earlier about Pantone being about color matching. And then these shoes paired up with the Air Jordan 29s were 500 bucks. 29 sell on their own for 225, so in essence these cost $275. People were happy to pay it because the resale on them is so outrageous. Anyway, look back. It's hard to believe that in all of these years there have only been 15 different Air Jordan 11s that have been retro. And it's even more hard to believe that they're all white and black and gray with the exception of those Pantones in blue. You know those Pantones are going to be just the beginning of Air Jordan 11s releasing in all different colors. Just last year, Nike released the Jordan Future, which is the outsole and midsole of an Air Jordan 11 with a woven upper. And already in one year, there's at least twice as many colors of Jordan Futures as there are Jordan 11 Retros. Nike hasn't diluted the Air Jordan 11 Retro yet with all these different colors, but I guarantee you they will. It's been a real pleasure walking you through each and every one of the 15 retros of the Air Jordan 11.